So I just uploaded a video last week responding to the BTWN guy and his friends regarding the passion that Paul Washer exhibits in his preaching. The question has always been, why do men like Paul Washer do what they do? Why do men like Paul Washer spend their time passionately preaching the gospel to sinners? 2 Corinthians 5.11 Knowing, knowing therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. One of the reasons is because men like Paul Washer are afraid. Afraid for men and women who walk through this world, lost and dead in their sins, on their way to hell without knowing it. And that part about not knowing it is important. It's why we have an urgency in these matters. Because they don't know the danger they are in. They don't know. The second reason why men like Paul Washer spend their time passionately preaching the gospel is because it's their job. 2 Corinthians 5.20 Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. But not just men like Paul Washer. If you, you the one listening to this video, is our Christian, it's your job as well. If I spoke to your closest family members, would they say that they even know that you are a Christian? Would they even know? And that's an important, that's a very important question regarding self-examination. And the third reason why men like Paul Washer preach passionately is because today is important. Let me say that again, because today is important. Now, why is today important? 2 Corinthians 6, 2. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You want to know why professing Christians have a problem with passionate biblical preaching? It's because they are cowards. Now, I want you to think about something. Let's say I'm your pastor. And I come home from preaching in another place one night really late. It's like 1130 and I come around this corner near your house and your 14 year old daughter is out there with a bunch of hoodlums. I mean, just doing all sorts of things. Now I'm going to be angry as your pastor. I'm, I'm going to burn with indignation. From a testimony, I'm not going to pull up and tell her to get in the car. But I'm going to drive to your house as fast as I can get there. And I'm going to pound on that door until you answer it. And I'm going to say, what on earth is wrong with you? And if you keep this up, I'm going to bring it before the rest of the elders. You repent right now. You're a derelict father. You're a derelict. You allow your 14-year-old daughter to run wild in the streets? We would all say that, I think. Man's a derelict. What's he doing? Yet you make the same claim about God and even boast in it. You boast in the fact that God has children running around all over this country full of carnality, steeped in sin, doing whatever they want and God does nothing according to your preaching. But they're saved, bless God. When you preach their funeral, you'll preach them straight into heaven. I've seen it a thousand times. Remember just a while back, a man in my own town in Illinois who was a known drug addict, drug dealer, fornicator, absolutely everything. And he is there. He passes away. And the pastor of one of the largest Baptist churches in the area, standing there, funeral. The th place is loaded with every person that's hardly ever been in church. Drug addicts and everything you can imagine are all there in church to honor their dead friend. And that pastor gets up and he says, I praise God. I know this young man. He sowed a lot of wild oats, but when he was nine years old, I was there when he prayed to receive Jesus Christ as his Savior. And he's in heaven today. And all those lost sinners went straight out into the streets justified in their sin because of conservative evangelical Baptist preaching. That's typical in almost every church in this country. It's true. It's true. And it's pathetic. It's pathetic. You say, oh, that's mean-spirited. Let me ask you a question. My mother passed away last year. But I remember three years ago when I went to the doctor's office with her because she thought something's not right. And that doctor, very gentle, very noble, he looked at my mother and he says, Miss Washer, he goes, you've got cancer. And he goes, uh, it, it's, it's radical, it's bad, and we've got to move right now if we're going to have any chance of saving your life. I want you to know that man made my mother cry. He hurt my mom. She, he ruined her day. We were going to go out to get something to eat. He ruined her week. He tore my mother to pieces. But he tried to save my mother's life. 
And if he hadn't done that, if he hadn't been so truthful, she'd have had no hope of salvation whatsoever. We'd have had no recourse at all. And he could have been kicked out of his own practice for being immoral. They ought to kick most pastors out of their practice. Because out of cowardice or self-preservation, they will not preach the gospel. That's all there is.